All right. It is so good to see all y'all smiling faces here. I'm so glad you're going on the retreat. It is awesome. <laughs> um, tonight, I am going to pass around another sign-up sheet. This is for, and I need y'all to pay attention on this one, okay? This is for our mission trip next summer, okay? The dates are July 11th through the 17th. You might be saying, why in the world are we signing up nine months ahead of time? Because your first, huh? Yeah, fundraising. Um, because the cost of this trip is $500. The first $100 is due uh, December 18th. That's a Wednesday night. It's on the form. Um, on this form, if you are interested in going, you're, I need your name, cell number, an email address uh, that I can, that you regularly check. Don't give me an email address that you don't ever check because that's where they send the registration forms and stuff for you. Um, your shirt size, and then just because you sign up on here doesn't mean that you're guaranteed a spot until you give me the hundred dollars. Okay, your first hundred dollar deposit secures your spot, and um, that's due no later than December eighteenth. So if you want to give it to me before then, that's fine. But the deadline for that, and that's when registration will be cut off is on December 18th. And this goes for adults as well. Uh, this is a church-wide trip. I mean, if adults want to go, it's what we did this summer. Um, I have talked with Lonnie, the man that was over it this last year, or his wife was. Um, we're actually, they're trying to get us a spot in uh, Kentucky. So a little closer to home, uh, still in Appalachia's. And uh, so I remember, uh -huh, yeah. That's how you know. They, they taught us, one of the things they taught us on the mission trip was, they threw an apple at you. And they said, that's how you say it. It's not Appalachia, it's Appalachia. And so that's how you remember. They started throwing apples at us. But um, so that's what this sign-up sheet is for. Um, so if you sign up on here, remember the cost is $500. Um, we'll have opportunities for fundraising. Um, I know Alexa last year, she had probably almost $200 of her trip, if not more than that. No, you had almost $300. Yeah, so see, she, she raised enough money that she had 300 of hers covered through the coffee fundraiser that we do. Uh, we have the same thing this year that we'll do, the, the coffee fundraiser. Um, so you have the opportunity to raise your money. Um, also, you can ask people to help. Uh, but the cost of that's $500, so I'm going to start that. If uh, you think you're interested, you know, you can sign up. But remember, it doesn't... It doesn't count until I have that $100 deposit, okay? So I have to have that $100 deposit before your spot is secured. Um, I have not seen Amanda King. I've got her picture. All right. Do we have anybody? I see a couple of new faces. Do we have anybody? This is your first Wednesday to ever be in youth group. Teenager. <laughs> and you lied. Teenagers. I see two back here. Now, you look familiar. You've been before, correct? Have you really been before? I am so sorry I forgot your face. <laughs> wow. I wish I could forget Connors, but I just can't. <laughs> all right, no first-time visitors. All right, well, this is a good crowd tonight. I'm glad to see all of you here. Um, but as this, again, as this sign-up sheet comes around, if you are interested, also, uh, Miss Andrea Holland is looking for some teens to help her with the kids' Christmas play. It's teen slash kids' Christmas play. Uh, you guys will have bigger parts as teenagers. So if you want to do that, see Miss Andrea tonight, okay? We've already passed the sign-up sheet around a couple of times. I gave it back to her tonight. But with so many of you being here tonight, I want to make sure that y'all know she's still looking for uh, some of you older guys to help, uh, guys and ladies, to help with the Christmas play. So if you're interested in that. Uh, let's see, I think that's all my announcements. Uh, fall retreat. Uh, if you're an adult, one of our adult sponsors, I need you to stay after the service. I need about two minutes of your time uh, to talk with you. It'd actually be more like five minutes. Um, I won't run into Andrea's time. <laughs> I won't run over into yours. <laughs> but I do need to speak with you real quick right after the service. Um, I think that takes care of announcements. December 6th and 7th. Y'all know what's going on then? Yeah, see, I didn't want to say that word again. It made me sick last week saying it, but 
Yes, December 6th and 7th, we are going to do a lock-in from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., and it will be at Jason Chapel. We're going to use their gymnasium there. It's going to be a combined lock-in, so just keep that on your radar. We'll be doing another one in April, and it's like four churches that are combined, and we'll be doing it at Cumberland Camp in Clarksville. So, uh, but just that one, I'll give you more information as we get the, uh, more information. I think that's about it. You got any announcements that I've missed? Or? Oh, thank you. Yes. Work day this Saturday. All you teens that are sitting in here, we need y'all here Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Okay? We got some work we're going to do. Um, Miss Nicole Rains is going to take some of y'all and um, help with the flower beds, getting the flower beds weeded and taken care of. And then some of us are going to be hauling wood. Uh, we got some trees that we have to cut down off this bank back here before we can get the banks repaired, the creek banks. So we're going to need uh, your guys' help. So any of you that can show up uh, Saturday morning at 9 a.m. No, we've got that all taken care of. Um, gloves. Yeah, if you have gloves, bring them. If, if you're tough and think you've got tough, calloused hands, just bring it on. <laughs> but if you have gloves, bring them. But that's this Saturday at 9 a.m. So keep that in mind. We need y'all this Saturday at 9 a.m. Also, this Sunday, um, I know some of y'all have a church that you attend on Sunday mornings. Uh, but if you don't have a church or if this is your normal church, you want to be here this Sunday morning. We have a special service that's going to take place. Uh, and y'all want to be here. It's going to be special. There's something that's, uh, I'm not going to tell you what we're doing. Uh, but it's going to be a great service and uh, we're excited about it, so you guys don't want to miss this Sunday morning. Sunday school's at 10. We have our youth that's right over here, and then we have worship at 11. So all of you guys are welcome, and we'd love to have all of you here. Any prayer requests? Awesome. Brother Carrington with cancer. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. Remember the Rice family. Um, if y'all know, especially if you play football, you know who Ricky Rice is. Um, Coach, what school is he at now? Rockville. Um, he had just gotten in trouble for praying with his players. And then right after that and all that started, his son was in a real bad car accident. Uh, and like Brady was saying, the doctors have now pronounced his son brain dead. Uh, so definitely need to be praying that. But that's nothing that's out of God's control. Um, God created us. He can heal us. And so we need to remember to lift them up. Uh, remember Johnny Bear? He is going to have to have surgery on his shoulder. Uh, he decided to be a teenager again and be evil Knievel and try to flip his four-wheeler, but uh, didn't quite work out for him. Uh, but he tore his rotator cuff, so he's going to have to have shoulder surgery. Um, good report from Miss Heather, correct? Yeah, she just has some bulging discs. So, but remember to pray because those can be painful. Um, if they get near that nerve, boy, they can put you down back pain. So. All right. Well, let's have uh, Grayson. Will you pray for us? Amen. Um, leadership team, y'all got my text today. None of you responded, so that does not give me good hope. Yeah. <laughs> it's for our student leadership team. <laughs> it's about a book they're supposed to be reading. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about, again, we're going to be continuing this series about, uh, well, what did we talk about last week? What did we start off? Anybody remember? Okay. Being a church member. 
How many of us in here are a church member? Okay. What, go ahead. No, you, you had it right, and then you followed up, so go ahead and finish. There you go. That's the key. We talked about last week how we're all members of God's church, the global church. And then we have our local churches, like here at Hurricane Chapel or the First Baptist in um, uh, McEwen. My brain went dead on me. Sorry. But the different denominations, those are what we call our local bodies. But if you are saved, if you have repented of your sins and trusted in Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, then you are a member of of the church and what we're talking about applies to you because this is important and what happens is we tend to get a misconception of what church membership is who remembers the name of the two men that I used in my story last week John and Sam. Look here. Good job. I was surprised. I wasn't sure if any of y'all was going to remember. All right. Which one of those two characters had a bad attitude towards church? That's right. John. Don't take it. I saw you eyeballing it. <laughs> That's right. We talked about Sam and John. I just made up a story about how they were members of the church and John had joined the church. And then when he wasn't getting his needs met like he thought he should, people weren't serving him the way that he wanted to be served, he quit the church. And he had a misconception of what church membership is. And that's not, and I'm talking about, when I say church membership, I'm not talking about here at Hurricane Chapel. I'm talking about globally. If you're a Christian, there are things that we have that have been, that we've been called to um, and an attitude that we should take as church members. And that is an attitude of servanthood. And that's what we were talking about last week was how we, are you, either, are you a functioning church member or are you a non-functioning church member? And if you're not a functioning church member, I challenge you to examine your life and see where God could use you at the church. So with what we've already talked about tonight, where could God use you here at Hurricane Chapel? Huh? I just gave you all an opportunity just about five minutes ago. There we go. See, we gave you opportunity. Caleb had it too. They was answering at the same time. Yeah, we got a work day Saturday. All of you guys could come. Um, I was going to tell you that you could uh, uh, put it towards your community service, but our government in their highest wisdom that they are, they have taken all religious organizations out of that. So you can no longer do your time at church. So, yep, that's changed. I know. That's what I said. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyways, I'm just telling you, don't try to turn in church activity. I wish you could. Uh, if we can find a way around it, I'll be happy to sign the form. Um, but they, it's a new change they started this year that for your community service for the Tennessee Promise or whatever it is that you have to get that for, for those scholarships, religious organizations don't count. So unless you're working with an outside organization like Second Harvest that delivers food to St. Patrick's, if you're helping at that, that counts because it's not directly, it's not the church that you're helping. You're actually helping Second Harvest Food Bank. So, But anyways, just a tidbit for you. But we talked about servanthood. And so we're trying to provide opportunities for you. Tonight, we are going to talk about unity. You know, we talk about how we should be willing to serve, but we have to be united. We as a body of believers, we have to be united. Now, does that mean that Trenton and I are going to agree 100% of the time on 100% of everything that we discuss. That's exactly right. No, it doesn't. But we can still be unified, right? We can have, Caleb and I can have a disagreement, but we can still be nice to each other. We can still be Christ-like. Okay, he's wrong, but that's okay. He can be wrong. I'm right. I mean, that's just like at home, Shauna's right. I'm wrong, but she lets me think I'm right sometimes. <laughs> but to have unity, it's very important. And if you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to look at two passages tonight. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4, and then we're going to look at Colossians chapter 3. 
Uh, but first, I want to look at Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 16. I'll give you a minute to turn there. And I have a couple of object lessons for us tonight to help tie this in on to show us how important unity is in church. Now, there are two things that will destroy the unity of a church or a unity of anything. It doesn't have to be a church. It could be a relationship. It could be uh, at your job. But there are two main things that are the biggest things that destroy unity. Can y'all name any of those? See if y'all take a guess, see if you can name them. Conflict? No, that's not one of the major ones. I mean, conflict can. But again, you and I can disagree, and it's sort of a conflict, but we can resolve that. There's two things. Somebody said it. I don't know where you're at, but selfishness. selfishness. Okay, that's not it, but that's a good one. <laughs> what? Gossip. That is the number one destroyer of unity. Gossip. Do y'all know what gossip is? Tell me. Give me an example, or just tell me what gossip is. Okay. You talk bad about people behind their back. Yeah, that could be a form of gossip. Yep, that's right. Y'all hear that? You talk with one person about something, they share something, you go and talk with somebody else about that issue. Um, if Garrett comes to me, and actually I'll use Ty because he's my son, so it's a little different. Ty comes to me and he says, hey, Brother Josh, I got to share something with you. I I'm really struggling with something. And he shares something with me that he's struggling with, something that's, that's hindering his relationship with God. And he comes to me and he shares with me. And then I go back and I get Andy back here. And I say, hey, Andy, come here, man. Let me tell you, man, you won't believe what Ty is struggling with. And then Andy goes and he goes to Johnny and he says, hey, Johnny, man, you won't believe what Josh told me that Ty is struggling with. That's gossip. You know, if somebody comes to us in confidence, if Ty comes to me, of course, I've told you guys before, if you come to me as your pastor in confidence, it stays with me. If you come to me and you say you're struggling with something, I don't run to your parents and tell your parents unless you're threatening bodily harm to yourself or somebody else. And then I have to. Um, so, but anything other than that, you come to me and say, hey, I'm struggling with uh, pornography. I'm going to pray with you. And we're going to talk, and I'm going to hold you accountable. But it doesn't mean I go run and tell your parents. So know that if you come to me, and it's the same with Brother Tim. If you go to him as your pastor, those things stay confident, okay? But gossip is the number one killer of unity. Because what happens is, inevitably, it always gets back to the person that first confided in you. Some way or another, it gets back to them. And gossip destroys unity. What's the other? Starts with an F and ends with forgiveness. <laughs> hey, good job. <laughs> Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is the second, and it's right up there with gossip. I mean, they're about equal. Either one of them will destroy unity. If Emma comes up and does something to me and she hurts my feelings, and I'm unwilling to forgive Emma, what happens to that relationship? It, yeah, it, it's gone. It's severed. Our relationship has been broken because I'm unwilling to forgive. No matter what it is, the Bible tells us in Matthew, uh, this is just an extra bonus that we'll give you. But in Matthew, Jesus is talking about, and he says, hey, if you are unwilling to forgive, your heavenly Father will be unwilling to forgive you. That's how serious unforgiveness is. And so those two things are the biggest destroyers of unity in anything, anything in life, any relationship, any partnership. It doesn't even have to be religious. Those two things will destroy any relationship, and it will destroy it very quickly. And so those things are what we have to watch. And we're going to see those in these verses. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4. We're starting in verse 1. It says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, and this is Paul that's writing a letter to the church of Ephesus, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, 
bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Do you notice something right here in these first three verses? You see what, how unity can happen? What do you, what do you get out of that? Do you, of those three verses, is Paul saying, hey, you can be self-centered? No. Here's the thing that we have to get in our heads. As a human race, we have to understand it's not about me. It's about God. And when we get it that order, we talk about it all the time. God first, other second, self last. And if we could put it in order, and that's what Paul's saying here, saying, hey, be long-suffering. That means, you know, no matter how much I aggravate Brady, she has to put up with me. <laughs> Without punching me. I'm going to throw that caveat in there. No. But it'll be long-suffering. We have to be willing to be long-suffering. We have to be willing to be forgiving in order to keep that unity. And then he goes on in verse 4 says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. You notice that there's... What Paul's saying here is, to have unity, we can't be selfish. It can't be about Joshua. It has to be about others. It has to be about God first. We have to be, like we talked last week, we talked about being willing to serve, be a functioning member. You have to be willing to serve, not come to be served. Now, there are times that, yes, I might have the opportunity to serve some of you guys. But that's not the sole purpose of what church is about. It is about us because of the sacrifice that Christ made. Then when we get that free gift of salvation and he makes us into a new creation, he, should in, he instills in us a new heart, and it's one that puts him first, other second, and yourself last. And this is how we have unity as a body. doesn't mean that we always agree 100% of the time on 100% of everything. We won't. We're always going to have disagreements, and it's okay to disagree, but we need to do it in a Christ-like manner. And Paul goes on to say, and again, he talked about the body. We talked about that last week, how the body's made up of all these different members. The eye can't say, hey, because I'm not a hand, I don't want to be a part of the body anymore. It just can't do that. And you as a church member, just because you're not the lead pastor of a church, you just say, well, I don't want to be a church member anymore. That's not how it works. We all are given different callings. And uh, but Paul was talking about that there. And then we look at verse 7. We're going to get into some of the spiritual gifts. It says, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led, cap he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And talking about Christ coming and living here a human life. He lived a sinless life. He paid the price. He took on the sins of the world, past, present, and future. He took on all sins. He took on my sins. He took on your sins. And he paid the price for that. And all we have to do is repent and trust in him for that free gift. And we're all made, and that makes us the body of Christ, makes us church members. Um, it goes on in verse 11, and it says, And he himself gave some, and he's, he's going to talk about very specific things. Again, we're talking about the different members of the body, of the body of Christ. And it says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints and for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to, the, to a perfect man, to the measure of stature of fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men in the, com in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from 
whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And Paul, basically what Paul is saying is, look, there are all different parts in the church. Everybody has different roles. Each one of you guys that are sitting here from the youngest to the oldest, you have a specific role in the church. Now, God might not have revealed to some of y'all of what that role is. We have two young men that have answered that call. Jacob and Gabe have both answered the call to ministry. They have answered a call that God has placed on their life, and they have began a journey to fulfill that call. God could call some of you guys to do something. You never know. Uh, Juliana, she was called to missions. Uh, Aunt, not Angie, uh, Kylie Edgman, answering to ministry, or missions. She has a heart for missions. There's all different areas, and we have to be unified. And what Paul is saying here is if you go back up, until we become a perfect man— is that possible? Can we become perfect? But does that mean we should stop striving to be perfect? No. We should strive to be perfect. We won't be perfect this side of heaven. But we can strive every day to be perfect and to obtain the life that Christ lived. And that's what Paul's saying. Is as we're to be unified, we have to be willing to work together under the same thing that the whole goal is to glorify Christ. And that's what we should be united under, the sole purpose. And he talked about not being tossed to and fro by weak doctrines. And that's by the different, the false religions that are out there. And there's a ton of them. There are people out there that will tell you there's more than one way to get to heaven. And if somebody ever tells you that there's any other way except through Jesus Christ, they're telling you a lie. There is only one way to get to heaven, and that's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That is the only way to heaven. And that's what Paul was trying to establish here, and he was wanting them to be unified. And we have to be unified because when we're stronger, when we're together, we're stronger. If I go out here by myself, and, and I have the privilege, I get to study the Word of God all the time, and I, and I know a lot of Scripture, and, and it's just one of those great things of being a pastor. I get to study the Bible. That's something I get to do. And, but if I go out here by myself, and I try to witness to people by myself, it's hard. But if I take a group of you teenagers with me, and we go out, and we go to share the gospel together, it's a lot easier because there's a group of us working together. And I've got an object lesson that I want to show you that tonight, by being unified, we can be a lot stronger. And you can be almost unbreakable. All right, so what I need is, I need Maggie. I need you to come up here for me. And I need Caleb. I need you to come up here for me. All right. Now, since you're stronger than Caleb, I'm going to give him the heart, the easier one, okay? All right. So what I want to do is, we got a noodle. You see that noodle? All right. Now, I'm going to give Caleb this noodle. How many of y'all think he can break that noodle? Y'all think he can break it? All right. Now, here's the trick. You can only use one hand. You think he can still break it? Some of y'all saying no. Man, they doubt you. All right, now I'm going to give him this noodle, and I want to see if he can break this one noodle. All right, I'm using one. I didn't say go. You broke it too quick. All right, now fold it half, see if you can break it again. And Stacy's not supposed to be watching right now. <laughs> All, right, see. All right, see, he broke it even with two. Okay. All right, good, good. All right, we got, hang on a second. Maggie, come here. I got something for you. Here, I won't even give you all of them. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you part of them. All right. What I want you to do is, I want you to grab this on either end. Okay. I'm gonna hold it in the middle till you get your hands around it. Can you grab all of them? No. All right. I can take a few more out. I got bigger hands. I understand. All right. You should be able to do that. Look, I already broke one. See, I'm helping you out. All right. Now, grab the other side. 
Okay. Now, how many of you think that she can, <laughs> how many of y'all think she can break all of those noodles in half? Look at that. Some of your friends are like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Those that didn't raise your hand, how many of you think she might be able to break some of them? Yeah. As she's dropping them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what we want to do is, I'm, I'm going to let you see, you're just throwing them on the ground. She, she's cheating. She's trying to get it smaller. All right, now, what I want you to do is, I want you to take and I want you to bend that and see if you can break all of those noodles. <laughs> wow. That's a lot bigger mess than I was expecting. I was hoping. No, you don't have to be. All right, now, wait. Here, let me hold it again. All right, now, get a good grip. All right, there you go. Now you got a good grip. All right, she's got a good grip. She's done thrown half of them on the floor. Pickup sticks here. I didn't say twist them. Just <laughs> see if you can break it. Ooh, it's hard, right? Now watch, let me show you. Could you imagine if I did this with wet noodles? <laughs> but look, even I can't break them all. It's right. Now, some of, some of them are breaking. If I kept going, I could probably break them individually. But to get them to all break, you see how hard? It's hard. But when we take an individual noodle... Did you hear it? I just stepped on it. I didn't have gas. That was a noodle. <laughs> See how easy it is to break when we're by ourselves or when we're individual? But when we're united, that's okay. Just leave them there. Well, yeah, we'll clean, I'll clean it up after. This is one of those things that's better to ask forgiveness than permission. No, just kidding. But you see how when we have one, if we try to do something by ourselves, if we want to be a church member by ourselves, and we want to be like John last week, where we want to come to church and we just want to be served and we want people to take care of us, we can't work that way. We can't fulfill the great commission that God has given each one of us. We have to be united. And you see, when, I, when, we were, when we're united, just like on those noodles, some of them broke. And that'll show that even when we're united, that there might be some discord, but it can be handled. And Jesus knew this. He told us in Matthew 18 how to handle situations like that. He gave us exact examples of how to handle when you're not unified or there's things to do. And the two biggest ones are what? Two biggest things that destroy you? Yes, gossip and unforgiveness. If I'm unwilling to forgive Luke, I can't have a relationship with Luke. Because I have unforgiveness. And so we can't be united because I'm holding something against him. And so as church members, we have to be united. Now remember, I'm not talking about just here at Hurricane Chapel. Because if you're a born-again believer, you're a member of the church. I have one other object lesson. I asked four people that I need your help with. If you come up for me. If you four that I asked will come up. Come up here. And I'm going to show you. We're going to do a, I'm hoping this works. <laughs> All right, we got the four, got four up here. All right. Luke, I'm going to have you sit right here with your legs facing this way. Garrett, you sit right here, your legs facing that way. Lucas, you sit right here, your legs facing this way. And you're going to face that way, all right? Now, now that y'all know how you're supposed to sit, I need all of you to stand up again. Stand shoulder to shoulder. Come here and stand shoulder to shoulder. Are they all the same size? Yeah, no. There's, we've got smaller. We've got bigger. You know, we've got, they each have different skills, different things that they can do, right? I would say that there's all different skills up here. But yet, if we're united and we work together as a body of believers, we can accomplish the impossible. And if we're striving to be united under the head of Christ that Paul was talking about in that passage, that's who we're under. If we're striving to do what Christ has set us out, we can, we can do great things. All right, you guys have a seat. We're going to see if they can support each other, okay? We're going to see if I'm able to take these chairs away and them remain supporting each other, okay? What you want to do is you want to put your legs out in front of you, make sure your feet are flat on the ground. All right, Grace, uh, Garrett, sorry. I get my boys mixed up all the time. They can be sitting right in front of me. You lean back on Luke's lap. 
Luke, you'll have to lean. And every, all right, there you go. Y'all got it. Y'all got it? All right. Y'all get, get your weight on your feet. Okay? Now I'm going to pull Luke's chair out first. Okay? You ready? Yeah. All right. Make sure y'all are leaning on you because if you're not, it's going to be a catastrophe. All right, look. We got one chair out. Now I'm going to take Kent's. Pick up your weight there. There you go. There you go. Now I'm going to grab Lucas's. There you go. There you go. You're good. You're good. Look here. One more. One more. We got it. Look here. Hey, now, you want to see what happens if I jump on top? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I get hurt. But you see, as they're working together as a group, they can hold each other up, right? They can support each other. Now, watch this. All right. What I want you to do is, I want them to stand up individually by themselves, okay? Kent, you're going to stand up first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Stand up, Kent. Go ahead. Just, there you go. Remove yourself. Do you see? Awesome, guys. Y'all did great. Thank you. Yeah, I'll give y'all, see me after. We'll get you some candy. <laughs> They'll get candy, too. Caleb and, we're going to let Caleb and Maggie eat noodles. <laughs> Here's the point of tonight's lesson. When we're unified, we can do great things. When we have division and we are not united together, Satan can pick us apart just like these noodles. He can break us easily. And that's what he wants to do. You can see it in all of the animal kingdom. They never try to attack the herd as a whole. They always try to single one off. Usually it's a sick one or it's a smaller one or a weaker one. And they try to single that one off in all of, I mean, you look at it from fish to the biggest beast on the face of the earth. They try to find, when they're getting, trying to get food, they look to separate them. And they want to separate. And Satan wants to do the same thing to us. And the sad thing is, we're letting him. We let Satan divide us over some of the stupidest things. I've sat in meetings before, not here at this church, but I've sat in meetings before to where, and I'll share a couple of stories with you. Uh, we were going to redo uh, some of the design of a building. And we were having a meeting, and discussion came up about the color that was going to be used for the carpet and the furniture and stuff that was going to be in the, in the room. Well, the division got, and there were some that had such a strong opinion of what they thought would be the best, and then others had a difference of opinion. Remember, I said, we won't always agree 100% of the time on 100% of everything, right? This meeting got so heated, there were almost fistfights. And we're talking about because of the color of furniture. Now, would it surprise you to tell, that I could tell you that that was in a church meeting? Again, not here, but that that was in a church meeting. This was a group of people, men and women, that were Christians, but yet they were ready to fist fight over the color of furniture. That's pitiful, guys. And Satan knows. He knows some of our areas, our weakest areas. But if we set out, like Paul said, in those first verses, we're long-suffering. We don't put self first. Look, I think we should have hot pink furniture in here. Okay, that's just, I just think it would be great. That'd be awesome. Y'all would never fall asleep again in this sanctuary. However, 99.9% .9 of the church is going to disagree with me. Does that mean I'm wrong? No, I like it. Look at, look at him now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, and really, I don't want hot pink furniture. But you think of that, different colors of furniture. What if we had blue carpet in here instead of green? Oh, it has to match? Okay, yes, because it would drive some people crazy. But just saying, if everything was blue and not green, could we still worship God? Hey, if we had an extra inch of padding on the pews... You think you could worship God better? No, you'll sleep better. <laughs> now, I want to share one other story with you, and this one might really shock you. Again, I was in a meeting, and we were talking about um, music. And that is one of the things Satan will divide a church quicker than anything 
over music. Because what happens is the music you guys like is a lot different than the music I like. The music I like might be a lot different music than Brother Carrie and Miss Peggy like. But we were sitting in a meeting one day, and again, not here, but we were in a meeting, and this was, we had been in this meeting about three to three and a half hours. The only thing we had discussed was music. That was it. And here was the discussion. How many hymns we were going to sing on Sunday mornings. Guys, three and a half hours. And so finally, and, and one of it was is how we sing the hymns. Now, one of the hymns happened to be very, uh, what would be a right word for them? Very close to one of the individuals that was in this discussion. They really enjoyed this hymn. They enjoyed the old style of the hymn, and it was one of the ones that had been changed to a modern version, still had the same words. It's just a faster tune. And this gentleman was very upset. And he just kept on and on and on. And finally I said, look, let's just make a decision, okay? If we want to do hymns, oh, let's do them. Let's do two hymns, four hymns, six hymns. I don't care. Let's choose a number. I'm frustrated. Three and a half hours I've sat there and talked about music. And we're fighting. We're arguing. And this gentleman stands up and he says, I'll tell you this. We will never sing that song again in this church the way it was sung. Because that song is my song. Now, can anybody see where the fault is there? Exactly. It's a personal preference of his. But he was adamant. And he was so mad. And he was mad at me. I was in my early 20s. I wasn't completely saved yet, so I poked the bear a little more. Uh, I was really completely saved. I just was very arrogant when I was younger. Uh, and I just poked him. And I thought, you know what? How in the world could you be so aggravated over this? And just poked him. And he finally just irate, got up and left the meeting. But guys, Satan wants to divide us. And he will find anything it doesn't matter if it's the color of the carpet or if it's the songs we sing on Sundays or if it's the clothes we wear to church. Satan will find something. He's looking for anything, and we have to stay united. We have to be united. Doesn't mean we agree 100% of the time on 100% of everything. Some of you guys like music. Look, Garrett likes, uh, he used to, uh, like a band called Skillet. How many of you know that band? Yeah, I don't like them because I can't headbang. I can't throw my hair around. No, but it's just, I, I don't, they're screaming into a microphone and I can't understand half of what they say. But does that mean that it's wrong? No, he likes it. God can speak to him through that music. Now, do I want that on Sunday mornings? No, I don't want headbanging up here. But, you know, but that's where we have discussions and we talk about those things. And we do it with Christ in mind first. God first, others second, yourself last. And so we have to know that to be united, sometimes we have to let our desires fall by the wayside. Sometimes I have to let Natalia, her idea to be the one we go with instead of mine. Sometimes Josie might have to let uh, Gage, let his opinion but we need to be united. I saw a sign, and I'm going to close with this verse, close with these verses in Colossians. You can be turning there as I share this sign with you. Uh, Colossians chapter 3. But I saw this sign today as I was finishing up preparing and happened to come across this sign. And uh, I told you, what are the two things that are the biggest things that destroy unity? Gossip and unforgiveness. That's right. Here's what the sign said. And this was a church sign. Gossip is the devil's radio. Are you his DJ? Think about that. Gossip is the devil's radio. Are you his DJ? You see, gossip is very easy to do. Somebody comes up and gives you a juicy tidbit of information, and you think, oh, man, i got to go share this with my friend. I'm a, Lucas, like, I got, you can't tell nobody, okay? I don't tell nobody, you promise? All right, I'm going to share something with you. And then Lucas goes and says, hey, Hawkins, man, i got to share this with you. Can't tell nobody, though, okay? 
even if he promises, he's already broke his promise, right? And that's how gossip starts. Gossip is the devil's radio. Are you his DJ? And that really hit home. I actually wanted to go out there and put it on our church sign. That's powerful. Gossip can destroy in a moment. But I want to close with these verses tonight. Chapter 3 of Colossians. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Again, what are we seeking? What should we be our sole purpose as Christians, as children of God? What should we be seeking first? God. That's exactly right. God first. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because these things, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. We have all at one point, if we're children of God, we were at one point, we fell into that category. But when we became children of God, we were to set those things aside that Paul just mentioned. And we were to strive to put our focus on God and to be unified as a body under Christ as the head of the church. And Paul goes on in verse 8 and he says, But now you yourselves are not to put off, or not, excuse me, but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is in all and, or is all and in all. Y'all catch that? Again, we're talking about last week. Paul's tying in last week. We're all of one body. Now, we don't all look the same. I mean, it might be nice if everybody looked like me. What? Wow. Wow. <laughs> but we're all made different, but we're all part of the body of Christ, okay? We talked about in Ephesians, we're talked about different things, different areas that you can serve in, different areas that God might call you, but we're all united as one body under Christ as the head. And we have to remember that. Unity is very important in the church. Verse 12 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercy, Kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgives you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, and this is important, if you highlight in your Bible, I'd highlight this verse, circle words, underline. But verse 17, it says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all. Do what? All, not part, right? Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. We have to be united. In that passage, Paul talked about the very things, foul language, talking about one another. If we have differences with one another, we're to forgive one another. Guys, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I might think I am, but I'm not. And there might be a day that I might fail one of you. Or I might do something to make one of you mad. And it could be anybody in here from the youngest to the oldest. And if that happens, we have to work together. 
one of you might do something to make me mad. And what Paul's telling us here is, hey, if those things happen, put on love. Love first. And we have to be willing to forgive. Because remember, gossip and unforgiveness are the two things that will destroy unity faster than anything. And if you notice in both of those passages that we read, nowhere did it say that Dawson has to do it by himself. Nowhere did it say that Addison has to do all this by herself. He said, do it together as one body under Christ. And so we have to be unified in order to fulfill what God's call, God has called us to do. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for these passages. God, I thank you that, Lord, when you called and saved us, you didn't call us to be alone. But God, when you saved us, you made us part of the body of you. And Lord, that we are a group and that we work well together when we're working towards you. And Father, I pray that each one of us here tonight would be willing and able to set aside our own selfish desires. And Lord, that we could put you first, others second, and ourselves last. And God, as hard as that is to do, I pray that you give us the strength to do that. And Lord, I pray that you'd continue to use each and every one of us to glorify you, Lord, to reach the lost. And Father, I pray that we could stay united under one purpose, and that is to strive to be like you. I love you and I praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember two things. It ain't about you. It's about God. God first, others second, yourself last. But if you'll tell yourself this, it ain't about me, it makes it a lot easier to be unified. Okay? Love you guys. If you. <laughs>